С днем Великой Победы! Ура! As of now, Russia and Ukraine continue to exchange blows. Putin has even stated that this conflict isn't about territorial disputes but centers on principles. One of those principles is the balance in the world, where no one can unilaterally impose or force others to live or behave according to a hegemon's desires. Long before the current strife, Russia had, in May 2021, released a list of countries and regions it deems unfriendly or, in essence, enemies. This list has since grown to include 49 countries. But who exactly are these nations? What's the objective behind creating such a list? Diving deeper into the Russia-Ukraine war, a shocking recent revelation came from Vladimir Putin. He indicated the possibility of Russia withdrawing from key nuclear test ban treaties. Additionally, they've successfully tested their latest nuclear-powered cruise missile, the Burevestnik, which they claim is unparalleled in its capabilities. On the other hand, Ukraine continues to receive weapons support from various countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, and several European Union members. Germany has recently promised a second shipment of the Patriot missile system to protect Ukraine from missile attacks during the winter. Putin asserts that NATO is purposely provoking a scenario to annihilate Russia on the global stage. This unresolved conflict has stoked fears of potentially igniting World War III. If that catastrophe unfolds, the global economic impact will be profoundly felt. Even years after the hypothetical war's end, significant depression, massive unemployment, and soaring inflation are sure to occur. However, when reflecting on the aftermath of World Wars I and II, economic miracles did happen, primarily benefiting the United States, Europe, and Japan. However, remember that World War I saw an estimated 20 million global deaths, and even more tragically, World War II took a staggering 70, 85 million lives, equivalent to 3% of the world's population then. Are you prepared for the heartbreak of losing loved ones to war? After all, war's ripple effects won't solely impact the direct participants. Countries like Indonesia would inevitably feel its repercussions. Here's hoping it never comes to that. When Russia released its unfriendly countries list, suspicions began to arise. This list is Russia's governmental term for nations perceived as adversaries in the context of international relations. Russia might label a country as unfriendly, based on a variety of factors including political conflicts, ideological differences, economic competition, or contrasting foreign policies. Back in June 2018, Vladimir Putin signed legislation granting the government authority to retaliate against nations determined to act unfriendly toward Russia. This retaliation took various forms, including import and export restrictions, suspension or cessation of international cooperation, or even asset privatization. In the law's initial draft, 10 countries were identified. However, by the time of its ratification in April 2021, only the United States and the Czech Republic remained on the list. The Czech embassy in Russia was restricted to employing no more than 19 Russian nationals, and the U.S. embassy in Russia was prohibited from hiring local staff. This arose from a backdrop of tit-for-tat diplomat expulsions between the United States and Russia. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia in retaliation to alleged Russian cyber attacks and interference in U.S. elections. On the other hand, the Czech Republic accused Russian intelligence officers of orchestrating two ammunition warehouse explosions in the country back in 2014. The unfriendly countries list expanded considerably after Russia launched a large-scale invasion of its neighboring country, Ukraine, in February 2022. In response to this aggression, many countries worldwide slapped economic sanctions on Russia, aiming to cripple its economy. Russia counteracted by expanding the list of countries it deemed unfriendly. Five more nations were added to this list on July 22, 2022. They were Greece, Denmark, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Croatia, all of which were subsequently prohibited from hiring workers in Russia. 
As of now, the list encompasses 49 countries including Albania, Andorra, Australia, the Bahamas, Canada, Croatia, Hungary, Iceland, Japan, Liechtenstein, Micronesia, Monaco, Montenegro, New Zealand, North Macedonia, Norway, San Marino, Singapore, South Korea, Switzerland, Taiwan, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, and all 27 members of the European Union. Interestingly, Turkey is the sole NATO member not on this list. Many speculate this exclusion is due to the long-standing trade partnership between the two countries and joint energy ventures, such as gas pipelines and nuclear projects. One consequence of being on this list is that if these nations wish to receive debt payments, they must open specialized bank accounts in Russian banks to accept payments in Russia's currency, the ruble, rather than any other international currency. Furthermore, they must seek approval from a Russian government commission regarding all new corporate agreements involving Russian companies. Pretty stringent, right? In fact, most countries on this list have also extended aid to Ukraine in various forms, ranging from humanitarian to financial and even military assistance. As of January 15, 2023, 37 countries have been recorded offering help to Ukraine. The five largest aid contributor to Ukraine is the United States, with a whopping total of 73.18 billion euros. Following closely is the European Union, which includes its Commission and Council, chipping in with 29.92 billion euros. The United Kingdom provided a significant 8.31 billion euros. Germany contributed 6.15 billion euros, and Canada rounds out the top five with 4.02 billion euros. But that's not all. Other generous countries stepping up include Poland, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Japan, Italy, Sweden, Denmark, Austria, Czech Republic, Portugal, Australia, Spain, Lithuania, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Belgium, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Slovakia, Greece, South Korea, Luxembourg, Ireland, Taiwan, Slovenia, Turkey, Hungary, Croatia, New Zealand, and Romania. Why this outpouring of support for Ukraine? The reasons vary. Some nations act based on humanitarian principles, reaching out to a country racked by conflict and enduring the hardships of war. Many have a vested interest in maintaining stability, peace, and security in the European region. Supporting Ukraine is seen as a strategy to prevent conflict escalation, avert a more significant humanitarian crisis, and champion the preservation of peace in that area. This aid also symbolizes backing for core principles like freedom, sovereignty, and a country's territorial integrity. However, some view Ukraine as an essential economic and strategic partner to bolster trade relations, investment, and strategic cooperation. Others are striving to offset Russia's influence in the Ukrainian region to promote a global power balance. Yet despite facing relentless attacks and various sanctions, Russia remains undeterred. Many countries continue to purchase fossil fuels from Russia. Notably, China stands as Russia's largest buyer of crude oil. Then there's India, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, South Korea, and many more. Interestingly, some nations like members of the European Union might seem like they're talking out of both sides of their mouths. While they ceased coal imports from Russia since August 2022, they continue to import fossil fuels in the form of crude oil and natural gas. In fact, they're the second largest importers right after China, followed by South Korea, Spain, the Netherlands, and others. So, given all this, which countries are currently perceived as allies or friends by Russia? According to a survey by the Levada Center, a Russian non-governmental organization, several countries are viewed favorably by Russia. The list includes China, India, Iran, Syria, and Belarus. When it comes to the relationship between Russia and China, it's been strengthening over the years. The two nations have formed what's often referred to as a comprehensive strategic partnership. They share mutual economic and political interests, often coordinating at international forums regarding foreign policy and security matters. Notably, China has chosen to remain neutral on the Russia-Ukraine issue. However, since February 2023, 
There have been reports that China is contemplating sending weapons, ammunition, and drones to Russia. Similarly, Russia and India share a strong bond that dates back years, especially in the military, energy, and trade sectors. They frequently conduct joint military exercises, and India imports a significant amount of weaponry from Russia. The ties between Russia and Iran also run deep, especially in the context of Middle Eastern geopolitics and foreign policy. These nations have collaborated in various domains, including economy, energy, and security for a long time. As for Syria, Russia's relationship with the nation has been fortified and elevated since the Syrian conflict began. Russia has provided extensive military support to the Syrian government and played a pivotal role in political negotiations seeking a peaceful resolution. Belarus, a former Soviet Republic situated in Eastern Europe, unquestionably has a robust bilateral relationship with Russia. It's not just about support. Belarus is known to be heavily dependent on Russia, consistently assisting the country and even supplying it with arms. Furthermore, Belarus is part of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, which comprises former Soviet states. It's a given that other CSTO member states are Russia's allies. Besides Belarus, the list includes Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. But the list doesn't end there. Countries like Cuba and Pakistan have been allies. In Africa, Russia has fostered long-standing friendly ties with nations like Congo, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and Eritrea. That's indeed an extensive network of allies. But pivoting back to the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the United Nations Security Council, tasked with maintaining international peace and security, hasn't been idle. They've attempted to broker a resolution up to five times. However, they've hit roadblocks primarily because of the use of the veto power, hindering a clear path to resolution. 